Music is symmetry. It is audible symmetry. There is a clear and coherent structure to music theory, and this underlying structure is based on a framework of symmetry. In this video, we're going to look at three types of symmetry that are totally foundational to all of the patterns in music, so you can use them to build scales, modes, chords, and progressions. And this is more than just interesting factoids. There's a definite practical application to knowing these patterns, because with this head knowledge, you then have hand knowledge because once you know that there is a predictable structure to music based on these symmetries, then you can really master a music theory quickly to use it in the songs that you write. So like I say, let's look at three types of symmetry that appear in musical patterns, including translational symmetry, rotational symmetry, and reflectional symmetry. When most people think of symmetry, they think of reflectional or mirror symmetry. But to explain each type, if the letter P here means pattern, then translational symmetry just means to repeat the pattern like this. Nothing is reflected, the, the pattern, P, is simply repeated. And in music, we see this translational symmetry in the major scale, which is the most fundamental pattern. In the key of C, for example, we play the first four notes using an interval pattern of whole, whole, half, and then we skip a whole step over that line of symmetry to repeat the pattern whole, whole, half. The major scale is formed from translational symmetry, and we can continue repeating this pattern to form more scales like this. All through translational symmetry. But it doesn't stop there, because when we continue through all 12 keys, this pattern forms a giant ring we call the circle of fifths that's actually formed through rotational symmetry, or symmetry where a pattern is repeated in a circular formation around a central point. Here the letter P simply repeats in a loop like this. This is rotational symmetry. So the circle of fifths shows how music is also based on rotational symmetry. In a straight line, like on the piano keyboard, this sequence of overlapping major scales forms a pattern of translational symmetry. But since music theory is inherently cyclical, and these major scales eventually cycle back into the same repeating loop over and over again in the circle of fifths, that's how this translational symmetry turns into rotational symmetry. Because it's cyclical. And just like the major scale, which is fundamental to music theory, the circle of fifths is also fundamental to music theory, because it shows how all of the keys and notes in music are harmonically related, which is especially easy to see when you apply the color wheel like this, because just as all the keys in music overlap, all of the colors in music bleed seamlessly into one another, where this color wheel reinforces the fact that the circle of fifths is based on a framework of rotational symmetry. So that's two types of symmetry we've looked at so far. The major scale is formed from a pattern of translational symmetry, and then the circle of fifths is based on a framework of rotational symmetry. The third type of symmetry is reflectional or mirror symmetry. And to picture this, let's take the pattern of the circle of fifths and reduce it to the 12 notes of music, and then rearrange this pattern back into the chromatic scale, where we have the 12 notes of music, and within each key, like this key of C for example, all of the scale degrees are perfectly symmetrical around the tonic, or interval one. In this case, in the key of C, it's the C note. And because of the translational and rotational symmetry that you saw is inherent to these notes, this same reflectional symmetry is consistent across all 12 keys, resulting in an intricate, interconnected geometry that links all of the notes together into an elegant, organized super pattern of sound. In the key of C, when the C note is the tonic or scale degree one, you can see how there's a line of symmetry between the tonic, one, and its tritone, flat five, which is the complementary color or the polar opposite of C, G flat. And around this line of symmetry, all of the other intervals fan out evenly on either side. In the key of D flat, where the D flat note is the tonic or scale degree one, the line of symmetry extends between D flat and its tritone, or polar opposite, G, where now all of the intervals fan out on either side of this line of symmetry. It's the same interval relationships, but rotated in this direction. Likewise, in the key of D, where the D note is scale degree one, or the tonic, the line of symmetry extends between D and its tritone, a flat, interval flat five, where again the same intervals are consistently symmetrical around this line of reflectional symmetry, but rotated to highlight this key. And again, because of the rotational symmetry where all 12 keys in music follow the same patterns, that's how we get this elegant web of relationships. And this is why music is music and not noise, because there's this underlying order, this structure and beauty that gives music meaning. 
And again, the reason this is important, why there's a practical application to all of this is because once you know that these patterns and principles are predictable, then you can really start to wrap your head around these patterns to make use of them in creating music. So these three types of symmetry are again, reflectional symmetry, translational symmetry, and rotational symmetry. Where the chromatic scale is an embodiment of reflectional symmetry, the major scale is formed by translational symmetry, and the circle of fifths is created through rotational symmetry. Looking at these patterns another way, the chromatic scale is just the 12 notes in music. Shown here is a big ring of chromatic scales where these 12 notes are repeated over and over again to form one big loop. Then the major scale is formed by playing a special pattern of whole step and half step intervals that repeated through a pattern of translational symmetry also happen to form a big daisy chain pattern called the circle of fifths created through rotational symmetry where every fifth note in this ring is harmonically related. And together, these three patterns, the chromatic scale, the major scale, and the circle of fifths form what you might call the holy trinity of music, where each is simply a reincarnation of the others, and where all three types of symmetry coexist and intertwine to form clear and consistent patterns. Knowledge is power, as they say, and that's definitely true when it comes to songwriting and understanding music theory to make cool music. This is, of course, just a kind of a high-level look at these patterns, but there's a link in the video notes to a PDF where you can look at these patterns closer at your own pace. And also, if you really want to dive in, there's all sorts of information in the community. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please let the algorithm know, and I will see you in the next video.